Many dogs suffer from separation anxiety and unfortunately it has become even more common with people heading back into the office. There are many reasons why a dog can suffer separation anxiety from genetics through to negative life early experiences, feeling confused, stressed and lonely by the changing home environment and their routine. This is why we see a range of problem and destructive behaviours occur from excessive barking, toileting inside, digging and chewing things, scratching the doors and trying to escape the home. Some dogs have even chewed through doors in their paddock, so it is vital that you do not punish your dog who is actually crying out for your help. There is no one cure for all treatments, so it is important to try to identify the underlying issue and as soon as possible, as the more it happens, the worse it becomes. They don't just get over it. Talk to your vet or a vet behaviourist or a qualified dog trainer to try and identify that underlying issue so that the appropriate treatment plan can be implemented which may include medication to help, at least in the short term. Don't be hesitant to have this discussion. I've seen firsthand how it really can change a dog's life for the better. The number one thing they generally want is human company. And sorry, it often doesn't even need to be yours. So see if friends or family can help out or consider doggy daycare. If they are okay generally for short periods of time on their own, then work on independence training when you are at home. You'll find information about this on our website from the last series. For many dogs that are kept outside, simply providing them access inside the home, ideally your bedroom or lounge, can often result in immediate calm. Establish a strong daily exercise and feeding routine and ensure they have plenty of interactive toys, puzzles, snuffle mats or even long-lasting chews that you can find at your local pet stock store to help keep them occupied. Ideally, get a dog walker to take them out in the middle of the day, so combined, your dog is getting plenty of mental and physical stimulation to help keep anxiety as well as boredom at bay. In mild cases, you might find that calming pheromone sprays, collars and diffusers, such as Adaptal for dogs or Feel Away for cats, may assist in helping to reduce the anxiety in your pets, as can a thunder shirt in cooler weather, especially if you know that a thunderstorm is coming. Having the radio or dog TV on can help some pets cope with anxiety as it distracts them from the silence and it can also help to mask out those outside noises that sometimes might actually be triggering the anxiety. Remember to change your departure routine each day or desensitise them to some of those sounds that indicate you're leaving the home. Like your keys, don't just leave it though. Talk to your local pet stock vet if your dog experiences separation anxiety. Some pet stock stores also provide doggy daycare and mobile dog training services, which can help as well. Visit petstock.com.au. Become a Pet Stock Rewards member and earn Pet Stock dollars on thousands of products and services that can be redeemed on anything in store. T's and C's apply. Visit the website for details. Feeding our dogs a highly processed, high carb pet food can lead to weight and skin issues in many dogs. So, Rachel, you found a few issues when you were trying to transition Marshall across to a new diet. Yes, so when Marshall was coming out of his puppy phase, that was around the same time that Marshall was experiencing ear infections. So we took him to the vet and um, that's when the vet kind of told us nicely that Marshall is fat. <laughs> <laughs> so um, from there we knew we had to do something. So that's when we decided to transition him across to big dog. Okay, but it wasn't all smooth sailing even when you did that, was it? No, no. So Marshall went quite, um, you know, we had to slowly transition across from kibble to raw food. You can't just do cold turkey, yes. unfortunately. So taking him off his beloved biscuits was a little bit hard, but you know, great benefits from it. So Marshall went from actually 40 kilos all the way down to 34. And then what happened? One day Marshall was very hungry. He decided to eat some poisonous berries. Oh, and we no. had a bit of a trip to the vet. Um, and then that's when the vet told us he actually was too skinny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what did you do then? <laughs> so then we decided to up his meat yes. um, and, you know, we tri trialled other meats as well within the big dog range. Yes. But we still find that kangaroo was best for him. So it's all trial and error. Yeah. Um, so now we've just increased his meat and he gets a few snacks here and there oh. as well, <laughs> uh, which he really enjoys. Yeah, nice. OK, and on the skin issues, actually, like in the, in the ear as well, most a lot of people think that it's because of food that their dog has allergies when that's actually one of the least reasons environmental allergies tends to be the biggest thing and the great thing about introducing a raw food diet is that even though it might not necessarily address all the environmental issues by building their immune system it can actually help so that's probably why you're seeing a bit of a reduction there so that's good to hear you just need to keep out of those grasses Marshall <laughs> so what would be some tips if anyone at home was thinking of transitioning across to a new diet would you give yeah so 
definitely know your like know your dog, know yeah. what size they are, their intake, follow the guide. All of them are different and also just just see your vet so they can tell you whether your dog's fat or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. don't be offended either because it's really important to know this. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. If you'd like to learn more about the Big Dog Raw Food Diet, visit the Big Dog Pet Foods website at bigdogpetfoods.com. <laughs>It's important to get onto separation anxiety as early as possible. In many cases, this exercise that I'm gonna give you has a three-pronged approach that can help with mild to medium anxiety. The first is exercise. Take your dog for a good walk at least 20 minutes before you go out to release some pent-up energy. The second is to give them something to do, being interactive toys and long-lasting shoes. And the third is to leave them progressively for longer periods of time while recording them on your phone or camera. When it comes to the toys and shoes, these need to be safe, reinforcing and long lasting. So my recommendations include, firstly, a Kong wobbler filled with their wet food and frozen. Just putting some peanut butter or a bit of unfrozen food in here is pretty much useless because it will be gone in a second. Secondly, you want a long lasting shoe that takes your dog a good 10 to 40 minutes to get through. Now these new shoes are an alternative to rawhide and they come in a range of sizes and shapes. So choose one that you think is appropriate for your puppy or dog and then time how long it takes them to get through it when you're at home so that you know for future reference. There's a natural peanut butter one as well, so that's better for the smaller fussier dogs. You also can leave them with an appropriate size raw meaty bone if your dog is okay with bones and you've observed that they do actually eat them safely. Remember, anxious dogs may not eat when you leave them alone, so you need them to be hungry before you practice this exercise. When you walk out the door, the best thing in their world just left, so you need to leave them with the second best thing, which is food if they're hungry. So what does this exercise look like? You're going to take them for a walk. When you get back, you're going to set up your phone or camera. You're going to give them the long-lasting chew or bone, depending on how long it takes them. Then you're going to calmly go outside just for a walk around the block. You're not going anywhere, just around the block. The goal is for you to walk back in calmly without fuss while they're still working on their occupier and they're feeling good, not anxious. The more information you have, the better it is for developing new strategies. Separation anxiety is like a superstitious behaviour. It's been reinforced many times, so we need to start creating new positive associations with being left alone. We then slowly build up the time away and introduce more or all of the toys and shoes to keep them busier for longer. By the time your dog has worked their way through all of these, they should literally spend the rest of the time sleeping. Remember, severe anxiety though is a mental condition, so speak to your vet or vet behaviourist as it will probably need further intervention. In the meantime, check out the VitaPet Rawhide Alternative range at vitapet.com.au. Now guys, what ones am I going to leave you with? Hmm. Many owners of dogs with behavioural issues can be hesitant to consider medication, instead hoping training alone will help or that their dog will grow out of it. Unfortunately, for most dogs with anxiety disorders, and I have two so I know, it just gets worse, often impacting on their ability to join in family outings or simply coexist with their owners harmoniously. Training and behaviour modification on its own for dogs with high levels of anxiety is rarely successful, as the anxiety actually prevents the dog from taking in new information, including how to be calm. Anxiety disorders are caused in part by a problem with how the brain functions. Low levels of chemical messengers such as serotonin, noradrenaline and dopamine affect how messengers are transmitted and received and therefore how a dog thinks and feels, leading to increased feelings of anxiousness and worry over seemingly small things. It is without a doubt a medical problem that can not only cause behavioural issues such as excessive barking, destructiveness, aggression, fear and separation anxiety, but it can also affect other organs such as the bowel and skin. In the same way that a person with diabetes requires insulin, dogs with anxiety disorders require medication to help their brains function correctly. Medications most frequently used to help dogs with anxiety include fluoxetine, commonly known as Prozac, and also clomipramine. These drugs increase the level of chemicals in the brain that are responsible for promoting feelings of calmness and well-being. In some cases, where certain triggers or situations that set off the anxiety, such as thunderstorms, strangers, other dogs, 
grooming or a trip to the vets might cause them to become more anxious, short-acting medications that take between 30 to 90 minutes to work, such as clonidine and trazodone, are prescribed. Sometimes they'll be given in conjunction with fluoxetine for maximum impact, and together they can really help an anxious dog learn to trust the world around them and learn alternative responses with the right training so that they can cope when they're feeling unsure. So if you suspect your dog has an anxiety disorder, please do speak to your vet or ideally a vet behavioralist. In addition to an experienced trainer that uses positive reinforcement training. Positive training methods are vital for dogs with anxiety. You can also visit the Pooches at Play website for more information about anxiety and related behavior modification training tips and advice. Grooming an anxious dog can be stressful for everyone involved, whether this be at home or at a grooming salon. Some owners may not even realise how traumatic the grooming process may be for their dog. It's important to be patient and use positive reinforcement methods to help calm rather than being mad or forcing them into a situation which just makes it worse. While an anxious dog may never jump for joy when the shampoo or nail clippers come out, we can at least try to de-stress the situation as much as possible, which should begin at home. Firstly, Get them used to having their paws touch when they're relaxed. Don't force it. Just gently put your hands on a paw and offer praise or a treat should they allow you to leave it there. You can start to massage between the pads, always offering them the reward of praise or a treat. It's the same process with the other areas of their body, their eyes, their ears, around their tail and their bottom. Allow them to sniff brushes, scissors, nail clippers, anything that you're going to use and no sudden movements. We want to do positive short sessions. Simply stop if they get nervous and go back a step. Good boy. Again, don't force them into a running shower or full bath filling up noisily. Use a sink or bath filled with lukewarm water that just reaches their knees, using treats or even a soothing lick mat with dog safe peanut butter to focus their attention on. Once they're relaxed, run the water very slowly. Have someone help you with all of this if you can continually praising calm behavior and remember keep calm yourself dgg also has a natural relax shampoo that contains a range of botanicals including lavender chamomile and calendula known for their relaxing qualities it's also ph balanced for dogs and free of any nasty chemicals drying a dog with a noisy dryer is a massive problem for both at home and professional grooming so what we really need to do is we need to start with it off allowing them to interact with it before it slowly starts moving around then when you're ready to turn it on start it at a far distance on a very low setting so they don't react and always rewarding them with treats praise for a calm response then you very slowly decrease the distance and then gradually move it closer to them you just can't afford to scare them and never tease them with a hairdryer I do recommend talking to your vet about medication options for very anxious dogs make sure you let the groomer know too that your dog is anxious as the owner of an anxious rescue dog I can't tell you how all of this has helped make Vindy's grooming experience so much better he even actively goes to say hi to the groomer now when we visit our local pet stock store for all your home grooming needs look for the Australian made and owned DGG grooming range at your local pet specialty store or online <coughs> This week's Breed in Focus, if you hadn't already guessed it, is the Golden Retriever. These adorable creatures were originally developed in Scotland as sporting dogs in the late 19th century to retrieve waterfowl. <laughs> They're placid, sometimes, you reckon? <laughs> friendly and brimming with joy. They're great with children and tend to get along with other pets. They're intelligent and eager to please, and this, along with their love for work, is why we see them in so many service and therapy dog roles. In contrast, they aren't really considered much of a guard dog, no. given their love of people. <laughs> and because of their strong bond with their family, they thrive on being included in family activities inside and outside of the home. So if you aren't willing to fully embrace them in your life and activities on your lap and have plenty of food, then they're not for you. They are highly intelligent and have a strong desire to work. So they love obedience training and they excel at dog sports. Absolutely. The Golden Retriever <laughs> likes to be active and given their history, they can spend hours at the park or beach playing fetch or romping around in the water. They do need a decent amount of daily exercise and as long as they're kept active and have daily outings, they can do well in any sized home or apartment. Their stunning water resistant double coat is perfect for the love of and water. And as an average shedder, a brush once or twice a week will keep their flowing locks looking luscious. 
As you can see, they range from shades of cream through to deep gold, and often the tips of a puppy's ears will indicate what their final colouring will be as an adult. And talking about puppies, don't expect your golden retriever to mature mentally or physically as early as other breeds. If ever. <laughs> Whilst they are generally at their full height at one year of age, they don't hit their full weight until they're about two or three. And most keep their playful puppy personality for much of their life, with their average lifespan being about 10 to 15 years. Like the Labrador Retriever, Goldens love their food, so you'll need to watch their weight to keep them healthy. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, especially as they are prone to hip and elbow dysplasia, so any excess weight will place added pressure on their bones and joints. Recent studies have also shown that delaying desexing in this breed has significant benefits for long-term health, including joint disease. Your vet will be able to guide you with this decision. They can also suffer from eye problems, including entropion, where the eyelid rolls inwards, causing irritation and potential corneal ulcers, as well as progressive retinal atrophy, or PRA, and cataracts. Ear infections and hypothyroidism can also be a problem. An inherited heart disease known as subaortic stenosis is prevalent in the breed. Affected dogs are usually young in age and often have a reduced lifespan. That's why it is so important to choose a breeder that screens their puppies and provides certificates showing they have been tested and are clear of disease. Plus, always research the breed you're considering mm. thoroughly so that you can be prepared and know what to look out for. <laughs> That's right. What do you think? You have cleaned my hands. Thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> to find out how HIF Pet Insurance can help your pet in times of need, visit hif.com.au. <laughs>with autism have difficulty processing and expressing their emotions which can lead to high levels of anxiety particularly in the school environment I'm here today to meet with Amber who has been diagnosed with autism to find out how the McKillop Family Services Poor Powers program is helping get her back into the classroom Amber how has the Poor Powers program been supporting you so I usually have a very hard time at school. I find a classroom environment very stressful because mm. it's all loud and crowded. But having a dog supporting me by my side makes everything a lot easier to cope with. And dogs have something very special uh -huh. about them. They just have a calming energy and it really helps me be able to do my work. Oh. It makes my life a lot more stress-free. So outside of the classroom, how has the program been helping you? Outside the classroom, we have been going on walks, sometimes to cafes, dog parks, because I find being outside nature really calming to me. And we also do some basic activities that help me work out ways to keep myself calm, because of course the dogs can't always be with me. No. So, but sometimes I can find it hard to actually talk about things like my emotions and figure out how to calm myself down, but dogs <laughs> being there makes it very easy to talk about it in the first place. So why do you think the Paw Pals program is such an effective service compared to some of the other things you've tried? Well, humans can be quite stubborn and <laughs> <laughs> I feel like dogs, they're a lot less judgmental and yeah. they don't argue with you. They can just <laughs> give you the help that you need without making such a big fuss out of us. <laughs> well said, I think I agree with that as well. And <laughs> dogs are very beneficial in therapy and I guess a lot of other kids who also work with Poor Pals stay very calm and make everyone's life a lot easier. Oh, beautiful. They make everyone's life easier in general, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> if you would like to find out more about the Poor Pals program, then do visit their website and the wonderful news is the Petspiration Foundation has donated $100,000 this year to help expand the program wow. into Ballarat. I know it's wonderful. So if you'd like to find out more about the Poor Pals program, visit their website. And to learn more about the Perspiration Foundation, visit theirs. Thank you, Amber. Thank We've you. We've lost Lucy just in time. <laughs> <laughs> Every year, just over 500 puppies enter the guide dogs training program, but not all of them go on to become guide dogs, instead taking on other important roles in the community. Today, I'm at the Manly Courthouse to meet two dogs who have a very important job to do. Sam, why do some of the puppies that go through the guide dogs training program not make it as guide dogs? 
So guide dog work is pretty unique and uh, we require a specific set of skills mm -hmm. and temperament from a guide dog. And we like to work to our dog's strengths. So sometimes, you know, we just let the dog tell us what they want to do. Some dogs are better suited to ambassador dog roles. Yes. Some dogs are suited to the therapy dog program. And the cream of our crop are always the breeding dogs. So they're the ones that we choose to kind of, you know, help create the new generation of, of guide dogs. Oh, beautiful. And if they take on some of those roles in the community, what are the different roles that they might do? So the therapy dog program is one. In the therapy dog program, we have individual and family dogs mm -hmm. that go out to people who might benefit from having a companion dog. Yes. Um, we also place dogs in schools and nursing homes, hospitals even. We also have the Canine Court Companion Program. Ah, yes. And that's what's yours part <laughs> of. <laughs> that, that's your role, isn't it? And what do they do in the court program? Okay, so the Canine Court Companion Program is an initiative from the Department of Communities and Justice and they work alongside us at Guide Dogs uh, in New South Wales. We have uh, 10, almost 11 courts around New South Wales where we have volunteers and their therapy dogs enter the courts, they go in the foyers, safe rooms. Occasionally they'll get called off to do some special work too with the dogs uh, to help support victims of crime. And some really cool offshoots of that has been staff in the courts, yes. and particularly the sheriffs have enjoyed the dogs being They've got here. a tough job, they need a bit yeah. of love. <laughs> oh, nice. And how do they make, you know, what difference do they make here? It must be a bit. It seems to be when the dogs walk in that it, it just kind of lifts the mood. Uh, courts are pretty stressful places, there's a lot of serious stuff going on and so the dogs provide comfort to people that might be a little bit, you know, doing it a bit tough. It's something else to refocus on and, you know, just something to sit with and kind of calm themselves before <laughs> they go into the courtroom. Oh, and I bet they get lots of treats for their efforts, yes. <laughs> if people at home watching want to support the work of Guide Dogs, how can they? Well, Guide Dogs is a charity and we rely heavily on the support of uh, sponsors, donors, um, corporate partnerships. Yes, Pet Stock and Nextguard Spectra support you, yes, they? Yes, they do. Head to the website, find out yep. more. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. And you, Dior, you better get back to work. That's enough treats for you. <laughs> I'll get in trouble. <laughs> Would you like to win a Pawson prize pack worth over $2,000? One lucky person will win a year's supply of Vitapet treats, Big Dog Pet Foods, NextGuard Spectra Monthly Chews, a $250 pet stock gift voucher, DGG grooming and apparel, and a year's subscription to Dog TV. Plus, there's six consolation prizes featuring my latest book, World of Dogs, with a Vitapet treat bundle. To enter, sign up to our e-news and tell us the name of one of the charities featured this series. All entries will receive a free ebook on how to create a happy, healthy dog, so visit poochesatplay.com. That brings us to the end of this week's episode, but there's plenty more information and entertainment on the Pooches at Play website and social media platforms. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.